Hello all. As the title may suggest, this is a makeup tutorial. My first makeup tutorial and in all likelihood my last makeup tutorial. I was asked some time ago if I would do one and I confess myself reluctant because I don't feel that I do anything particularly original or different or interesting. Um, we have the likes of Drac Macon's and Black Friday and of, of Herbs and Altars. Their makeup is amazing. You know, they're so innovative. They're certainly Drac Macon's and of Herbs and Altars are constantly changing their makeup styles. I've very much come to a point where I've almost got a signature look. I've settled on a style that I like and I know suits me and I know works for me. That's not to say that I don't experiment from time to time, but I'll spend the afternoon doing some Drac Macon's esque makeup on myself, only to look at it and think it looks complete rubbish, take it all off again and go back to this. So I confess at the time I sidestepped the issue. And then after my Goth Summer Survival Guide, someone else asked me if I would do a tutorial on my makeup and I I've been thinking about it and I figured why not I would do it and if it worked out okay I'd post it and if it didn't then I wouldn't so if you're watching this then it must have worked out okay and I've posted it there will be no transition colors here I will not be blending anything out. As you can tell, I'm very much a block kind of girl. Um, that's just my style, it's how I do it, and um, it works for me. With regards to my makeup, this is my makeup kit. I don't have an awful lot. I'm not a great fan of palettes because I generally find that I will use two or three colours right down to the pan and the other 12 sit there never getting used. Again this is as a result of experimentation over the years where I've tried different colours and I always end up coming back to the same ones because they're the ones I like, I feel comfortable in and I feel they suit me better. Some of you may have seen this photograph on Instagram which shows my colour range. And as you can see from the photograph, every colour has its own pouch. So for instance, this is one of my two purple pouches. I have two shades of purple, one is lighter, one is darker. Every pouch contains the eyeshadow, an angled brush, a fluffy filling in brush, a pencil to be used as a base, a sponge for packing the eyeshadow onto the base pencil and a matching eyeliner. Yes I am that anal. I have a pouch for every colour. But the one I tend to go back to the most is the one that you see me in today. So although I've done my best to recreate the look that I had on the Goth Summer Survival Guide, this is actually pretty much my go-to look. Just something to say before we continue. You will be seeing this face bare and unsullied. Those of a nervous disposition may wish to turn off. Otherwise you have been warned and I accept no responsibility for any damage to either your screen or your psyche. So... If you want to see how I achieved this look, keep watching. So as promised, I am wearing the plush kitty makeup headband. Hubby thinks I look very cute. Not sure that's what I'm going for, but I can take what I can get. The face has been cleansed, the eyebrows are shaved off. Don't know if you can pick it up on this, but I have redness across my cheeks, on my chin and on my nose. So the first thing to do is to get that sorted out. So stud out, septum clicker out, 
I use a combination of this is boots color corrective it's actually they call it a foundation it's a little bit too goopy for me it's a bit thick so I mix that about half and half with my usual super drug moisturizing cream and I apply that to the areas with a little brush I then moisturize the rest of my face with the Superdrug moisturizing cream except for my eyes now at night when this look comes off I do moisturize once I've cleansed with this Avon specifically for the eye area moisturizer but I find that if I moisturize and prime my eyes before the makeup goes on it goes right into the creases and it just it's a horrible nasty mess so if I'm going to be putting makeup on, I don't moisturise around the eye area. I use a flat top kabuki brush to put my moisturiser on, basically because otherwise it all goes up under my nails. Right, now that's done. I will leave this to sit for about 5 or 10 minutes just to make sure that it's really sunk in. So I'll be back. In a bit. So I've had a cup of tea, my moisturiser is all sunk in, my face is not tacky, it's nice and dry and now it's time for foundation. For everyday wear I use the Rimmel Lasting Finish in the shade Light Porcelain and I apply that with a Real Techniques Beauty Sponge. The Beauty blenders aren't available in the UK. The beauty sponge, according to a lot of the vloggers, is just as good, if not better. And I got two for six quid in Superdrug. Now, the packaging will tell you to use the sponges damp, but I have a little tip that I got from a lady called Lucy Garland. I will leave the link to her YouTube channel down in the description box below. Go and check her out. She's completely self-taught and totally amazing. She uses either a makeup remover wipe or a facial wipe. I use a baby wipe and I dampen my sponge on the wipe instead of using water. That means it's not too damp and also the ingredients in the wipe will thin your foundation down if it's a little bit too gloopy. So using the sponge, the makeup goes all over my face but not on my eyes. The other advantage of using a face wipe or a baby wipe to dampen your sponge is that you can also use it to clean it off afterwards. So face is done with the sponge. To go down my neck, however, I prefer to use brushes, foundation brushes. Now, I have two here. This one is a flat top kabuki brush, which I got on eBay for five quid, possibly. This one I got suckered. This one is the Morphe G2. There is a particular beauty vlogger on YouTube who raves about these things um, and according to that particular beauty vlogger, this is a beauty blender on a stick. Well, I got some money for my birthday and I thought, well, I would try it. So I ordered it and I've tried it and it was about 25 quid by the time I had it shipped here. And yes, it's very good, but it's no better than this one. Hmm? So, don't always believe the hype, guys. Don't always believe the hype. On my eyelids, I use the W7 Get Set Eyeshadow Base. Because it's white, it really makes your eyeshadows pop. And I just apply that with a little flat brush. You don't need much, a little goes a long way. Job power.
powder. Star Gazer Loose White Powder, um, which is my go-to. However, you may remember from my summer survival guide, I said that I swapped my makeup routine round and I used a white foundation with the Pale Factor 30 powder. Well, I had a look on eBay and I found this. It is White Powder Factor 50. It comes from Japan. It's about 11 quid, but you don't need too much. However, today I'm going to stick with my Stargazer White Loose Powder. I apply it with my super cheap big fluffy brush from Wilkinson's. At this point I take a fluffy angled brush and just go back into the pot to go over the eyes. Also down into the creases of my nostrils under my nose. Taking the same facial wipe um, now I'm just going to clean off the rest of my jewellery and take the foundation and powder off of my lips. From doing my eyes and the rest of my face I stick on a lip balm or a lip moisturiser onto my lips. This one is the Lip Plumper by Avon. Next bit, contour. Um, I'm not a big contourer, really. Um, the colour of my contour depends very much on the basic face that I'm going to be wearing. If I'm wearing predominantly eye purple either on my eyes or on my lips, then I use a Rimmel purple eyeshadow, which I've had for years. If I'm going very grey and black with grey and black eyeshadow and grey and black lips, then I use this eyeshadow is called You're the Greyest. It's from Essence. I got it in Wilkinson's for about a quid. As I'm going to be doing a purple lip today, I'm going to go with my extremely old Rimmel eyeshadow and I use a flat foundation brush. highlight I don't blush it's it's not what I do the next bit that I go to is my eyes and the first thing I do is map out the shape of my eyeliner I use a black Barry M eyeshadow again I've had this for donkey's years and I have got the thinnest smallest angled brush I think I have ever seen it was actually part of a nail art brush set, which I got in Poundland. It has a really sharp angle. It's quite hard, so I get a nice line. Now, all over the place at the moment is the taped wing. I don't bother with tape because that just takes my foundation off. I have a piece of card. Place the card at the angle I want it on my eye. And with my brush... Draw in my line. Thanks to my dear grandmother and mother, I have quite pronounced hoods on my eyes. So if I was to draw a straight line straight out from the corner of my eyes, they would actually end up drooping. So what I have to do is cheat and draw the angle. Can you see the angle there? Now, what happens down here just depends on a whim, really, whether I'm just going to have this one line coming out or if I want something else going on. Today, I quite fancy having the shadow underneath. I also use this brush to mark out my inner wing at the bottom. The next thing I do is mark out where I want my eyebrows to go. Next, 
explained um, in the introduction, my basic makeup shape is pretty much always the same. It might get more extended or I might do something different underneath. Colour combinations will change but the shape itself is pretty much always the same. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into my cut crease. If I'm using a colour, I will go to the pack and every colour has got its own very sharply angled thin brush. For me personally, the style of makeup I do, I find it just works better with an angled brush. They don't have to cost a lot of money. These ones are cheap ones from Wilkinson's. I think this was a couple of quid. But as today I'm recreating the look from the Surviving Summer Guide, I'm going to stick with my teeny tiny brush and my black eyeshadow and draw in my cut crease. So drawing into the top part of the socket and I don't go, as you can see, I don't go all the way round. So my next job is to line my waterline and I pretty much always use white these days. Now whatever colour is going on the lid nearest my lashes, I will go to that pack and take out the pencil. And I put that just on a thin line close to the lashes as a base for the eyeshadow. And in this case, it will be the white pencil again. When using a sponge tool, I pack eyeshadow onto the pencil base. Now I go to my under eye um, with just a cheap black eyeliner. Again this is Essence. This was from Wilkinson's and it was a quid. I draw under the eyelashes as close to the eyelashes as possible but I do come down quite away. My smudging tool, I just smudge it a bit. I set my eyeliner in place with black eyeshadow and a very thin flat brush. So now I'm going to continue with the eyeshadow on the upper eyelids. The look that I'm creating was predominantly grey, so I go to my grey pack. I have my grey eyeshadow, this is by L'Oreal, and I continue drawing the shape through the socket and then out to meet the end of the eyeliner. Sometimes I take it out a little further. I would suggest you pat rather than drag because that can distort the shape of your eyelid and therefore will distort the shape of your makeup. Having drawn the outer shape, now it's just a question of filling it in where I want it. So for my eyeliner around my eyes, I always use a liquid eyeliner with a brush. Um, I don't like the felt tip pens, I find that they drag my skin a bit too much and they can go a little bit patchy. Um, I have no particular brand loyalty, I'll use stuff from the pound shop if it works. Whatever size bottle or um, applicator it comes with, I generally use an artist's very fine brush because I find the longer the handle the more control I have. However I recently purchased a NYX eyeliner for no other reason than the handle is immensely long. It makes it really easy to work with. Is the eyeliner any better than the Poundland stuff? Not particularly but the handle is very nice. If I have 
patchiness issues with my eyebrows, I go back in with the liquid eyeliner on a brush and just fill that in, sharpen up any edges, extend any points that I want to do, make them thicker, deeper, whatever. So I'm going to do that now. Eyebrows tidied up, eyeliner pretty much on. Next stop is lashes. I like these ones. Ardell Curvy Lashes. I've got tons of lashes in here. You can get packs of 10 from China for a couple of quid. At the end of the day, you can spend a lot of money on really good lashes, but they will still only last as long as they last, depending on how well you look after them. As you can imagine, nails like this, and lashes don't generally go. I have this lash applicator. Again, Poundland. Something slightly more funky. I have proper eyelash holding tweezers. I don't have a problem with eyelash glue. I have no sensitivities whatsoever. And actually, to be honest, when I run out of eyelash glue, I just use Copydex. I don't have a latex allergy, so Copydex is fine for me and it's practically what you're getting in the pack with the eyelashes anyway. If you do have a latex allergy then obviously you have to be very careful, make sure you use a latex free eyelash adhesive. I'm not going to bother showing you how to put these on because I'm sure you know it's a right faff. Put the glue on, wait for about 30 seconds for them to dry, put them on, take them off, move them around, put some more glue on, do it all again. So I will be back to you when my eyelashes are on. So this is the finished product. With hair, lips, jewellery, the works. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I confess it was slightly nerve-wracking, to say the least. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, and until the next time, take care. Bye.